Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Here with 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's it. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing, knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. You know, a lot of times when we read scripture, we're not exactly sure what it's saying. But there's a certain amount of respect we're supposed to treat each other with. Now, there's some saints in the church just like people on our job. Just something about them gets on our last nerve. We see them coming, and we're ready to get to going because we don't want to be bothered. It is just too much high maintenance to deal with some personalities, isn't it? Yeah. Well, there are some that think the same way about you and or me. So no matter the situation, because we are human, we will rub each other the wrong way. But God is very much into relationship, very much. And he does not want us divided. He doesn't want what they call schisms in the body. There's enough of that with prejudiced folks and religious folks that have denominational divisions. There's enough of that going all around. God wants to see unity, having the same mind. He wants to see us look at each other with care, with compassion, with concern. You hear me? That's why it says having compassion one of another. Love as brethren. What that means is, I am to love you as if you're my sister. And I'm to love you as if you're my brother. And you're to do the same with me. Matters not what color, what size, what shape, what age, what denomination. It matters not. The point is that God has put the members, everyone in place that we are part of the body of Christ. And parts of the body cannot live without other parts of the body. As much as we may like to, we can't. So, if you separate yourself from the body of Christ, if you stray away and say, well, I can't be bothered with those church folks. What you are doing in essence is cutting a branch off from a tree or just cutting a leaf. Let's say you're a leaf or a little small branch off of a major branch, which is connected to the tree or the vine, so to speak. You hear me? The vine is Jesus. And once we are cut off, and we cut away from each other and, you know, talk to the hand. I could not be bothered with any of y'all. What we are doing is setting ourselves up for spiritual demise. Do you understand? When you separate yourself, you are making yourself vulnerable to the enemy. Just like in nature, you have a herd of cattle. And what happens? The lion stalks about seeking whom he may devour. Well, some of those animals give them permission, almost invited, because they get so caught up in whatever they're doing, they stray away from the pack. And when they stray away from the pack, 
They're isolated. And when they're isolated, they get devoured eventually. May not seem like it now, but that's what happens. So we have to be very, very careful about thinking that we are all that and a bag of chips and hey baby, I do not need to be bothered with you. Oh yeah, you need to be bothered. You need to be bothered. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. Not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrary wise, blessing. So I don't have the right to tell you to go to hell. I don't have a right to say, why don't you just drop dead? Why don't you just get out of my face? I don't like you in the first dog on play, blah, 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 blah. We don't have the right to treat each other that way. The Bible says, no, do the opposite. Be a blessing. Be encouraging. Be nice. Knowing that you are there unto call that you should inherit a blessing. In other words, that's what God called us to do. That's what the fruits of the Holy Spirit are about. The characteristics of God. When you see the way Jesus behaved on the earth, that is the way God wants us to behave. Jesus was a living example. All right. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Now, there are times when, you know, your mouth and my mouth can get a little away from us. Well, you need to use self-control, and so do I. There are times when I would love to tell a person about themselves. I remember a woman told me one time, uh, just to give you an example, because, you know, we be as human up in here, and sometimes we need a little encouragement to know we're not the only ones. Uh, now, here I am, an ordained minister. I excuse all of this. I just took my braids out, and it's a bad hair night, and I haven't finished deciding what I'm going to do with my hair for church. But what happens is when... A person gets on our nerves. Now, this woman, for example, remember I was going to tell you a story. This woman is standing there telling me about all these diets. Now, she was way over 200 and decided to go on some kind of a diet. It worked for her. I've tried millions of them. They don't work for me. So, but I've tried and tried and tried. So this woman, this was, I don't know, maybe about 20-something years ago. Every time she saw me, she had to tell me about a new diet fad that just came out. Well, the cat in me, the I don't want to hear another word about my weight in me, the human side of me, the old man, as the Bible might refer to it as, wanted to say to her, well, that's good you lost weight. What you going to do about your face? Now, if it had been the unsaved one in me, I would have wanted to tell her just how bad her face looked, just how much older she looked as a result of getting her little girl, her little, uh, how do they call it, your little, uh, anyway, her little shape back. They're like, but girl, you lost that face. That face has gone down the tubes. You need to cover that up with a mask. Now, that's old me. But I just said, okay. And I walked away and got into a conversation with someone else. Because it's no need in making someone feel good. I mean, I'm sorry. There's no need in making someone feel bad when they really think they're trying to help you. Even if what the problem is, is they've gotten a little full of pride because they've accomplished something and they want everybody else to accomplish it too and they want to tell them how. Well, you know how it is. Ex-smokers want to tell everybody to stop smoking. 
uh, uh, ex overweight people want to tell everybody how to get their girlish figure back or their their boyish uh, you know their their six pack and their muscles and all of that. They want to tell them how to do that. So sometimes they forget how it felt when people kept rubbing it in their face. What's wrong with you? Okay, now. Then there are times when I have seen women who have lost weight and they didn't try to be mean at all. But they really didn't look good because they lost so much, they aged almost by 30 years. Well, they're looking after their health. So I'm not going to go up to them and say, Oh my goodness, look at you. What happened to your face? Oh, my girl, you need to go get a facelift. You lost weight, and that's good, but your face looks like crap. That's not love. That's the loose tongue, totally out of control, and an attitude of meanness. You don't say cruel things to people like that. And if you have a tendency to do so, or if you know secretly deep down within that you kind of enjoy hurting people's feelings and you call yourself a child of God, listen to this. Number one, ask God to forgive you and deliver you from that. But listen to this. Verse 12, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And anytime you say things or you do things to make people feel bad about themselves, anytime you parents call your children stupid, retarded, a butthole, um, be a nice when I say a butthole, good for nothing, you, 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 you're not going to grow up to be anything. You're just going to end up in jail just like your daddy, just like your brother, just like your... Uh, it just gets ridiculous. You know, we don't realize how we curse each other with our mouths. Well, guess what? God doesn't like it. He calls that kind of behavior evil. And his ears are not open to your prayers. Some of you preach the gospel. Some of you sing the songs of Zion and praises to God and the worship. And, oh, you lead worship and you're just up front, just, just invigorating the saints of Zion. And you got the nastiest attitude, the nastiest mouth. You don't even know how to talk to your choir members without embarrassing them. That is not something that draws blessings from your Father, which are in heaven. So, I'm not going to keep talking. Just be careful how you treat one another, brethren, sisterin, in Christ Jesus in the love of the Almighty. We don't know what love is. We don't know how love acts. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and look and see what love does and what love does not do. God bless you as you grow.